Today, I want to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. In this video, I'll show you some things that helped me understand a little bit of why this theorem is true, and I'll show you my favorite proof of Pythagorean's Theorem. There's this fact that if you have any right triangle, you take the lengths of the two sides that touch the right angle, square them, and add them together, and that's equal to the square of the third side. The Pythagorean Theorem is the name for this incredible rule. It lets us study right angles and even create them out of thin air. They say that ancient Egyptians knew that you could tie 13 equally spaced knots in a rope, then make a triangle with the lengths proportional to 3, 4, and 5, and then you had a right angle. You could lay out buildings or fields or pyramids with it. Numbers like 3, 4, and 5 are called Pythagorean triples because they're sets of three integers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. In some ways, it's amazing that Pythagorean triples exist at all, isn't it? It wouldn't be that surprising if, whenever we made a triangle with integer length sides at a right angle, the longest side never turned out to be an integer. But these triples exist. There's an infinite number of different Pythagorean triples. Somehow the universe has given us these integers that make right angles. That's because this Pythagorean formula is true, and we can find cases where the sum of the squares of two integers is equal to the square of the third. How in the world does this work? My big question is why squares and square roots even come up when we're talking about right triangles. I mean, it's pretty reasonable when you're talking about the area of squares that square numbers and square roots would appear, but why the sides of triangles? Why not logarithms or cube roots or some other strange function that isn't easy to write down? Maybe you've seen Euclid's proof of the Pythagorean theorem, or the square inside of a square proof, or President James Garfield's proof. I've seen them, and they're all fascinating, but none of them really helped me get a feeling for why the Pythagorean theorem was true. Let's get started. We'll start with the simplest right triangle, the one where both sides touching the right angle are equal length. We'll lay it on its side. Imagine it's a flagpole with a shadow the same length as the pole. And we'll take a rubber band, line it up with the shadow on the ground, and then we take one end and raise it up the flagpole, keeping the other end anchored to the bottom, and it's obvious that we're stretching that rubber band. How much do you think we're stretching it by? Double? 50% bigger? Or 1.5 times? If we didn't know the Pythagorean theorem, maybe we'd have to guess or try to make really careful measurements. But for this triangle, at least, let's see if we can figure it out. Let's call the length of the flagpole and the shadow and the unstretched rubber band 1. And whatever it is when it's stretched, let's call it x. What if we took the rubber band at the end of this stretch and stretched it again bigger by the same amount? We're going to show this by doing the same thing again visually, lining up the end of the first stretch with the short side of another triangle that's the same shape and stretching it through to line up with the long end. Now stretching is an operation of multiplication. If stretching it the first time made the length go from 1 to x, that multiplied by x. So doing it again multiplies it by x again, and the length we end up with is x times x, or x squared. Now we can put another copy of the small triangle right here, with the long side of the small triangle touching the short side of the big triangle. All the angles turn out to be 45 degrees and 90 degrees, so we convince ourselves that this is a straight angle, that these are right angles, and that these opposite sides are equal. So we've got a rectangle. The other pair of opposite sides must be equal, and x squared must equal 2. So we know that x is the square root of 2. It shows that the Pythagorean formula works in this one instance. When both smaller sides are length 1, then the longest side of a right triangle must have a length that is the square root of 2. We can put everything on a square grid. The big idea here is that stretching the rubber band through 45 degrees from one of the small legs to the long leg is making it longer, multiplying it by some number x. And geometrically, it's also taking it off of the nice square grid and putting it on the diagonal. But stretching it through that same motion again multiplies by x again, giving us x squared. And geometrically, it puts it back on the grid and makes everything line up in right angles. And in this case, makes that corner land on an integer grid point. Does it work with other triangles? If we take a 1 by 3 triangle and we do that stretch twice around the same point, it ends up here, which is not on the grid. But if we do the stretch first clockwise around this point and then counterclockwise around this point, we've turned clockwise and then counterclockwise by the same angle, so we have to end up with a line that's parallel to the original. So these are parallel and this is a right angle. We've just got a hole to fill here and then this will be a full rectangle like the other example. Here we can't just take a copy of the small triangle and fit it in here. It's not big enough, but if we scale it up by 3, it fits in there perfectly. 
you might want to ask yourself how we know that this is a straight angle instead of 179 degrees or 181 degrees or something else. What forces this to be exactly 180 degrees? That's a good thing to figure out on your own. Once we've got our rectangle, you can see that this side has to equal this side, and x squared is equal to 1 plus 3 squared, or x equals the square root of 10. Again, the main idea is that we did a stretch and rotation, which multiplied the length of our line segment by x and knocked it off the square grid. And when we did the stretching motion again counterclockwise instead of clockwise, it multiplied by x again and put it back on the grid. This is a good illustration to me of how square numbers sneak into the lengths of triangles. Stretching is multiplying, and we have to do the same stretch twice to get everything back on our nice square integer grid. The same argument works no matter what the size of the left side of the triangle is. If we choose any integer or positive real number and call it y, the same proof will show that x squared is equal to 1 plus y squared. Now if you want to pause the video and try to find a proof of the full Pythagorean theorem, you can. What I like to do to prove the Pythagorean theorem follows the same idea but starts with a slight detour. We take a right triangle with sides A, B, and C, and we make three copies. One of them scaled or multiplied by A, one scaled by B, and one scaled by C. They're all the same shape, just different sizes, and then they fit together into this beautiful rectangle that we've been working with. We just have to prove that this is a straight angle, because these are the three distinct angles from our original triangle, and the three angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. And then we know this is a rectangle, so the long sides are equal. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's it. You can think of it as taking this a squared side and using the triangle to stretch it twice. First we stretch it by c over a to turn one of the a's into a c. Then we stretch it again by the same motion to turn the other a into a c. The first stretch takes it off of our nice orthogonal grid, but the second one puts it back on lining everything up nicely so the line segments with length a squared, b squared, and c squared are parallel and we can see visually that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Actually, once you have these three triangles, there are several different ways to prove the Pythagorean theorem. My favorite way, because it feels even simpler than this rectangle, is to just make two triangles and prove their equivalent with the SSA rule. So the proof looks like this. I did come up with this proof myself, but that doesn't mean I'm the first to prove it this way. If anyone finds a proof that uses this same idea, post it in the comments and I'll annotate the video here to give credit. If you want extra credit, then you can try applying this idea to a triangle that's not a right triangle. You might even be able to prove the law of cosines. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this has increased your understanding of the Pythagorean theorem, and hopefully I'll be back soon. Bye.